What is up guys, welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and fairly recently many of you may have seen my $5,000 AMD Threadripper Gaming and Editing PC Build Guide and a lot of the questions slash criticism that I got in that video were with regards to cooling where I featured Cooler Master's brand new MA621P. Why did I use an air cooler with Threadripper and is it any good? So today I thought I'd delve deeper into this unit and whether it's worth it for your next Threadripper gaming PC. Cooler Master have actually released two separate coolers, a 620p and 621p model. Now there's one distinct difference between these two, and it's that the 621p here today is exclusively designed for Threadripper. So it features a far larger contact base plate uh, for the larger Threadripper CPUs. Many existing coolers are offering uh, mounting support for Threadripper chips, uh, but with their smaller contact plates, you are gonna see more inefficient cooling here. Now, many people, including myself, have actually described this new MA621P as a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo on steroids and one that's doubled itself. You can see you've got the uh, dual tower uh, CPU cooler with two heat sinks and an absolute crap load of heat pipes to move the heat from the CPU up to those fins to be dissipated as fast as possible. I think the cooler aesthetically looks really, really good. It's got a matte black heatsink design with top black covers that cover the heat pipes and the top of the cooler in a really, really nice way. It's also super duper symmetrical, which is very satisfying and features two uh, glossy but still subtle Cooler Master logos on the top of the unit. In terms of mounting and installing this thing, because it's designed exclusively for Threadripper and Threadripper has a uh, backplate built into the motherboard, it's actually very, very simple. It's a really simple case of installing the two included brackets with one screw each and then screwing these into the actual Threadripper CPU socket. It's super duper simple and whilst it is a bit of a pain to use the spanner or the wrench, I got called up for this actually for my use of terminology in a recent video, uh, can be a bit tricky to actually screw in uh, the screws under the CPU heatsink. However, that is a trade-off of using an air cooler with Threadripper, and I can't see any other way around this. You need big heatsinks to dissipate all that heat, and a trade-off is that installing it is a bit more tricky than usual. Now, many CPU coolers designed exclusively for Threadripper come with thermal paste pre-applied at the bottom. However, Cooler Master make you do it yourself. I don't have too much of an issue with this. However, they really should include a larger tube of thermal paste. Threadripper uh, CPUs are so big, they require quite a lot, and it really does only give you one attempt to get it right. If you cock it up, say you forget to remove the plastic cover or you have some troubleshooting issues, then you are gonna need more thermal paste. And I just think it's a bit stingy on a cooler that isn't exactly cheap by air cooler standards. On a less stingy note from Cooler Master and something a bit more positive, you do get two fans included, and both of which are Cooler Master's uh, Master Air Pro Fan 120s or something like that. Either way, they're $20 fans each if you buy them uh, retail, and they work really, really nice. They're quiet, uh, efficient, effective, and also RGB, which, you know, what more could you ask for? Cooler Master also include uh, an RGB uh, inline controller. So if you don't have a motherboard with a compatible four pin RGB header, then you do you are able to actually use the RGBs on this system and you're not gonna be left in the dark, literally. You also get a fan splitter included with the cooler, which is another nice addition and the fans do come pre-applied to the heat sinks. One uh, slight drawback here, one criticism from me, is you don't actually get a third fan mounting bracket. It would look really cool and would improve performance slightly if you were able to install a third fan at the rear, but Cooler Master don't give you the actual fittings in order to do so. They did with other air cooler models, the Hyper 212 Evo is a great example, and whilst three fans is definitely overkill, it would look a little bit nicer, and it's a shame Cooler Master haven't included that. Aesthetics and looks and all that other stuff aside, just how well does this thing perform? Because that's what really matters. I tested it using a Threadripper 1950X, so the top end model, a 180 watt TDP CPU at 100% load for five minutes using the CPU-Z uh, stress test tool. God, that's a mouthful. The CPU is also running at stock clock speed, no overclocking in this scenario, and the fans on the CPU callout were set to automatic in the motherboard BIOS. Whilst at idle, I was seeing temperatures of 32.3 degrees Celsius and cranking up to 100% load, I was seeing 67.8 degrees Celsius. Very, very impressive numbers for an air callout on a 180 watt TDP CPU. Now I will actually put some additional uh, temperature benchmarks from other CPU coolers that I've collated from the internet 
uh, onto your screen. Now, as I don't actually have a range of other Threadripper compatible uh, coolers to test directly against. However, in the air cooler department, if you're looking for something that's pretty decent, then this could be a really, really decent bet. It's also not that expensive and an RRP of around $80, although I will leave links in the description below for the 620 and 621p models, even if you have, say, uh, AM4 or LGA 1151 CPUs that other model will have you covered. But I think that just about wraps it up for today's video. If you did enjoy it, smash that like button and do subscribe. I'll put links, as I said, below for everything mentioned. And you can, of course, check out all of my Threadripper content that includes a CPU cooler in the card section here. Smash that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more. Turn on push notifications. Hit me up on Twitter and Instagram. It's at GeekerWatt. And as always, we'll see you in the next GeekerWatt video.